Hey friends, Silvano here from roughinstudio.com. Let me ask you a quick question. Have you ever asked yourself what you should put on this drum bus, you know, to actually make the kick punch true, to add some warmth and 3D kind of analog sound? If yes, I have three ways on how I process drums. And at the end, a little bonus, how we can make the hi-hats flow over our head a little bit more. So let's jump in. Before we start just quickly let's play that track this is without processing So with the processing, I have the feeling the, the claps cut through a little bit better. Um, the hi-hats moves around. Yeah, it's the impression that the hi-hats are a bit more over my head. Without. Yeah, it just sounds a little bit more punchy, a little bit more glued in my opinion. So yeah, let's see what I did on this drum bus or what I usually do on the drum bus is first insert the simple EQ, right? So let's quickly listen to the track in context. Without processing, I really have the feeling that the drums are missing some punch, some yeah glue, some you have the feeling something is missing, right? I put it in now. So the first thing I do is just simply EQ. I know it sounds really boring, but yeah, you can come really far already with just a simple EQ. Um, my favorite one is the ozone one, just because the, the look and feel I get used to it. And I use it in uh, mid side mode. So what I do first is on the drum bus, I cut very low around 29 and also on the top very steep cut and this already holds together the whole drum bus a little bit better And really listen to the kick mainly because I have the feeling that the whole drums get together a little bit better and the kick gets a tiny little bit more punch. And I learned this from a mastering mentor. He came up and said, yeah, you know, just insert an EQ and cut uh, on the top to make the low end a little bit tighter. And uh, I thought, man, what's going on with you? This is crazy. That, that can't work, right? If we, top, if we cut on the top end, it makes the low end tighter, but um, then I tested it and it really works. So let's quickly check that. Now listen to the low end, to the kick. 
Can you hear that? Just with this steep EQ cut around, I don't know, 15k, the the kicks attack comes a little bit better through, I have the feeling. That's really crazy. And again, I did another cut around 28 hertz. And I have the feeling without this EQ cut, the kick sounds a little bit like whip, whip, you know, it, it comes, it swaps in somehow. It feels, it sounds like the whip, whip, whip. And with the cut, it's really tuck, tuck. Let's listen again. So this is the first thing I do on, just on the drum bus, just EQ, lows and highs, and then uh, second one on the mid channel, sorry, and the second thing is I cut on the sides just to make sure that I don't have any low end frequencies in the low end, right, on the sides, because I found if I have no low end frequencies on the side channel, the track has more punch, more grit in the mids, right? And again, I cut on the top as well, around the same frequency spot like in the mid channel. So that's it, first step, just EQ, mid side, low end, top end, and on the sides. Then the second one is the virtual mi mix rack, which is uh, from Slate Digital. I really love those plugins because, um, yeah, it's simple to use. I love how it looks like. And those are basically just little 500 modules, right? So we can change them, we can uh, move them around, we can put in some different ones and I actually inserted a few of them. So the first thing is a VCA compressor. So what is a VCA style compressor? I don't want to go too deep here, too technical here, but uh, in general what you need to know is VCA compressors work great on monster channel drum bus to add some glue, some punch a little bit. I tend to, to go with the slow attack mode and uh, fast release to not destroy the transients, right? And I have the feeling with this uh, compressor we glue a little bit together, the, the kick is more constant hammering, in my opinion. And what I also do is I use it in parallel mode, so um, I blend it with the dry, unprocessed uh, sound and with the processed one, right? This is too much. I have the 
feeling around uh, 60 works great. And I also have the feeling that the clap is coming out a little bit better. It's more into your face, I have the feeling. It really brings out those lower mids, in my opinion. The next one is the FG Bomber. What it is in essence is it's some kind of an exciter, but it's very simple to use it. I mean, it has four buttons and uh, it really can add some depth to the, to the whole drum bus and also some little bit more punch and glue in my opinion. So let's have a listen. At the moment I have the feeling without this little plug-in all the sounds stick right in front of, of my face. Not, not kind of a 3D kind of feeling. But if I turn it in, This is way too much, right? Yeah, again, I have the feeling the hi-hats are shaking a little bit more, uh, get a little bit kind of a lifting. Third processing in this virtual mix rack is just using this EQ, adding a little bit of 60K, the famous 60K, to really bring out the punch of, of the kick. much but I just want to show you how this works it's very subtle but you can hear that the, the kick sponge is coming out a little bit better And then uh, I just took out some 4K around for the hi-hats and also on the top end a little bit because I thought it's a little bit harsh sounding. And to bring out the, the, the clap a little bit more, I added the, around 400 hertz. And then the fourth module is the custom series lift. Again, those are just two buttons. And uh, you basically have a big or a punchy Pungy uh, setting for the low end. Again, a little bit more punch, even more punch, and then on the top end, the silk setting. I really like it because you can really lift up that that top end on some drums and without making them harsh sounding. On the 
last thing I worked on was with the virtual mix bus, which is an emulation of some analog mixing consoles, you know, these big consoles in these big fancy studios. Let's have a listen. And again, I have the feeling it creates some tiny little bit of space. Yeah, a little bit kind of 3D kind of sound. And also the kick again comes a little bit tighter in my opinion. And the last thing I did was inserting another saturation tool. To add a little bit richness, a little bit, a little bit more fullness to the track. I like how the kick cuts through with this. <laughs> this is uh, really, I love it. And it gives also a little bit more of a warm sound in my opinion. And let's reference back, bypass the whole chain. Sounds very weak, right? Without all these uh, little modules. especially to sum this up what we did first we did just EQing lows and top end on the mid channel and on the side channel and second one we used the VCA compressor then we added a little bit enhancement with this uh, FG bomber then we added a little bit of um, 60 hertz punch for the kick then again we added some saturation this really moves the needle in my opinion and a cool little uh, function of this uh, virtual mix rack is you can copy the whole chain to the B setting and now we can compare it now we can basically swap this one with another one. Sometimes I also like this one. I like this one more because on the other one with this module I have the feeling that kick is distorted too much and it gets a little bit boomy sounding. And third thing I did on the drum bus was just um, using using a little saturation tool again and this saturate plugin is cool because you have a drive and a clipper in one plugin and after feeling this really gives some fullness to the whole drum drums
love how the hi-hats come to life a little bit better with this uh, little plugin. And also the kick again. I have the feeling it just gives a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> you hate that word, but punch, really punch. It just gives a little bit more grit, in my opinion, to the whole drum bus. Now let's reference back again without all that chain. Oh, sounds very weak. Can you hear the kick, how it lags in punch? Let's listen in context. I take the whole chain out, three, two, one. Feeling something is missing, I, I want that. Sounds really, really weak in my opinion. Without this little processing. And you know what? I didn't want to show you this in this tutorial, but um, a little bonus here to make that hi-hats a little bit more bouncing over my head feeling, you know. Um, what I use as a last thing is uh, just on the side, upward compression. I don't know, 2K, listen, without, now listen to the hi-hat section, if I turn it in, I have the feeling, you know, this is shaking a little bit over my head. So yeah, that's it on this uh, drum bus processing to sum it up. Number one, EQ, mid-channel, side-channel, low-end, top-end, cutting to glue that thing a little bit better together. Uh, then I used the virtual mix rack from Slate, VCA style compressor, then a little bit excitement with this FG Bomber, then 60 Hz on the EQ to bring out that kick a little bit and as a bonus this uh, custom series lift um, and then some saturation tool in this case I used some uh, console emulations to add a little bit more space a little bit more glue to fatten up that thing a little bit better and also with this new flange we fatten it up a little bit with clipping and distortion and in the very end as a little bonus, we used some upward compression to move those hi-hats a little bit over our head. So it gives the impression that the hi-hats are yeah, moving around over our head, right? So 
So now you ask, what can you do with this information? So, so those, so this is my chain, how I do it. And you probably ask yourself, yeah, well, that's cool, but uh, I don't have all those plugins that you have. What I recommend, just go and experiment with the stock plugins. Use this uh, Ableton EQ8 or what what's name is this. Um, then use the glue compressor. And then um, at the third, just use this drum bus tool. It's amazing. Um, it has also drive knobs, crunch, uh, transient stuff, you know. And uh, it's basically, you can do very similar stuff. And um, yeah, use some upward compression only on the sides. Maybe you can also test it with uh, Ableton stock plugins and hopefully you get a similar result um, I haven't tested it by myself because I get really used to those tools and I just stick to it because it gives me fast results and uh, yeah if this was helpful leave a comment how you currently uh, process the, your drum bus to get maximum of punch and some analog warmth and grit and uh, second thing if you sometimes struggle with mixing low end you know the famous problem of kick and bass relationship I have a little seven step low end checklist um, that i add in the description you can download it below if you want and uh, yeah it's packed full with all the plugins that i use the techniques the ear training uh, stuff that really shapes your your ears to really hear the nuances of small changes which is so important because your ear is your gear the old saying but really it's true and go and download it i hope this was helpful thanks for your time it means a lot and uh, yeah happy producing see you next time cheers thanks